What's going on, seniors? It is May 7th, 2020. Coming at you with another video for our macroeconomics unit. Um, before we get into that, though, I just want to make sure that you are all um, checking in with your teachers about their grading policy. Um, I am following the district policy that was sent to us, and I'm respecting that through my interpretation of that policy. But I think it's, um, and that's the policy I put on the classroom on May 4th, but it's uh, also a, a good idea um, for you guys to make sure that you really get in contact with each and one of your teachers about um, their policies and where you stand in their class, um, just to make sure you're in the right safe zone, right? Um, and you're uh, doing what you gotta do. Um, so that's my advice to you. Uh, go ahead and make sure you do that um, and talk to them, okay? Um, but for us, we are going to talk about the stock market today. Um, we're going to learn a lot about that. Um, we are uh, going to explore it um, because it has a lot of real life implications for us right now with coronavirus. So I've shared the screen and we're going to go ahead and start here on slide 60 at the stock market. Okay. So before we even really get into it, we're going to talk about like what the stock market like means. Okay. So the stock market is an expression that determines it's like a market, like a supermarket, but instead of vegetables and fruits and whatnot, making up the market, companies make up the market. And then the consumer is still us and we can go and we can buy small percentages um, of ownership in a company. I'm talking really small, like point zero 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 one percent of company. So it's small ownerships. When you buy that small ownership, it's known as a share. That means you have bought a share in the company. That share represents stock. So you bought stock and now you're a shareholder. That's the share that you own. You share it with the people thousands the tens of thousands of people who also own stock in that company that's why it's known as also a share let's look at for example amazon okay amazon one of the biggest companies in the world we know it's jeff bezos is the owner right but he doesn't own a hundred percent of the company even though he's worth billions and billions of dollars he only owns a majority share um, to be a majority shareholder, which makes you the majority owner because you own the majority of the company, you got to own more than 50%. That's all you need to own. If you own more than 50%, you're the owner, the majority owner of the company. But Jeff Bezos doesn't own 100% of his company. He only owns a certain percentage. In fact, Jeff Bezos owns what percentage of Amazon? Yeah, he only owns 4% of Amazon. Um, but that still is, um, like even said, blah, blah, blah. he still owns um, the majority worth of the shares available. So he owns more than 50% of the shares available. Um, but the other percentage, the 96% is spread out by tens to hundreds of thousands of people around the world. Um, and to be able to beat 4%, you'd have to come up with a hundred plus billion dollars, which no one really has. So um, that's how he's able to own so little. Um, and it shows you how rich that company is and how valuable Amazon is. Um, yeah, this is about his divorce that uh, the, his ex-wife made off with like 30 something billion dollars from a divorce. Kind of wild. Um, I need to learn her secrets and marry me like a rich billionaire. Um, so right now to own, if you want to go to the market, that stock market, and you want to, ooh, uh, I'm kind of in the mood to buy some Amazon, right? It's going to cost you just for one share, $2,356.10, just to own one share. It's very expensive to own Amazon, right? There's only so many shares available. People are in bidding competitions to control the share. That in part is what affects the stock's price. If we look at the max of Amazon, okay, if we had gone back 20 years ago, when it first hit the market, it was worth $1.73. Had you bought it then, just one share at $1.73, and you sold it today, 
you would have made roughly about $2,354, roughly, $55, $54 something dollars. You would have checked me on my math on that. That's just one share. Imagine had you bought a thousand shares back then, right? You would have made over, I don't know, what's 2,000 times 1,000 calculator time. Mr. Bishop would be upset with me times a thousand. You would have been uh, two million dollars. That's how much money you would have made. And if you had bought a thousand dollars back then, that would have only been about a one thousand seventy dollar investment. Doable, very doable. It's risky. I mean, you're putting in a lot of faith in one company. You could hypothetically lose a thousand dollars if the company goes bankrupt. But for people who invested early, they're millionaires now. Okay. So now you're probably wondering, well, Mr. Tomei, why would Jeff Bezos even sell off any of his company? Isn't he going to get rich because the company's going to be big? Like why would he, he wouldn't even be more rich. Yeah, sure. He'd be more rich if he owned a percentage of the company, but here's the problem. There was once a point where Amazon, they weren't the Amazon that you and I know of. They were a small online company that originally their only plan was to sell books online. That was the original purpose of Amazon. I think I've shown you this before, but this was Jeff Bezos' old office. Old office. This is from a long time ago. This is like this is back in the day during the dot com boom, and Amazon was one of the hot companies that was like coming out at the time. But that was his office. Spray painted Amazon sign, not really glamorous, right? Today, if we look at the Amazon headquarters. I mean, we got like 21st century stuff, okay? So they've, uh, they've glowed up, as you young millennials say. Um, but there was a time when Amazon didn't have a lot of money to grow their company. And so that's what a lot of companies have to do in their early infant stages once they get to a certain size. They need people to invest in their company to grow their company. Right. If you want to be an international corporation, you need to have planes, you need to be able to build factories, hire more employees. And if you only have so much money, it's going to take a long, long, long time to ever get to that point. Right. And if you want to, you know, time is money, you want to get there fast. That's why you sell off a percentage of your company to people. It's called going public. 20 plus years ago, Amazon went through it. Google's done it. Apple, et cetera. Once they know that they need more money, they're going to go into a, the stock markets and sell off a percentage of their company. And what that does is it drives up their overall value, right? Let's say you and I are competing for one share of Amazon stock back when it was a dollar seventy-three. Let's say the day the stock, the shares become available, I'm like, I'll buy the share for 150. Well, then you offer me a deal and you're like, hey, Tomei, you know, I'll buy it for 155. I would have made a five cent profit off that. I'd maybe consider, I'm like, you know what, I'll sell it. And then you buy it, right? And then maybe someone buys it off you. And then maybe there's a bidding war because people are like, oh man, Amazon, maybe it's really gonna do well. And what that does is it drives up the price up, 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 up. Right. And if you multiply that by tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of shares that are available around the world, that much of a growth is exponentially huge. Okay. Um, and so that's what over time has drove up Amazon's value, especially if you look in kind of the past 10 years, that's when they've had their real growth. I mean, even if you'd gone back to 2015 and you bought it at 660 bucks, still pretty expensive. I mean, you would have almost quadrupled your investment. Right. I mean, that's, that's a pretty good deal. Um, so Amazon, um, has done pretty well. And if we look at today, this is like the bidding war that's going on right now. Today it opened at $2,373. It's gone down. Um, or actually, no, excuse me. It opened the day up at $2,373. It went down before its previous close where it finished the day before. And it's kind of gone up, down, up, down, and it's a bidding war, you know? It's all just like legalized gambling. It's like, how do I think this company's gonna do in the future? And so people are around the world are buying, selling, buying, selling, buying, selling. 
It's all very fast paced. So what I want you to get out of this is two things. One, um, one, corporations use the stock market as a way to grow their companies at an early stage. And for individuals, the consumers, it allows us to invest in companies and make a profit hopefully one day um, when we sell maybe our shares that we have. I've kind of mentioned this, but stocks fluctuate mainly on three factors. How's the market doing? What's the company's potential to grow? What's the recent news about a company? So right now, the biggest global event that's happening around the world is coronavirus, right? So if we look at the Dow Jones, uh, which is a measure of our economy, it looks at the 30 biggest companies um, uh, in the market. Um, and uh, it's one of the various stock exchanges around the world that you can do business in. <clears throat> Stock exchanges, there's like the New York Stock Exchange, there's like, uh, what is that, uh, Wall Street, that's where all the, uh, the stock market, the businesses kind of get done. Think of like Wolf of Wall Street and stuff like that. Places like that exist around the world. Um, New York is probably the most well known. It's just a place where if physically these people do the trades and where all the businesses and the banks are at and stuff. So the Dow Jones is like one um, example of a market and it's like the top 30. So it's usually the most well recognized and well known. If we look at the max of the Dow Jones, okay. Um, actually, let's look at the past five years. That gives us a better idea. Uh, maybe one year. Let's look at one year first. So about a year ago, we were at 20, our, our market was about 25,000 points. The points is just like a number system um, that uses like averages, it's like a mathematical formula. I, I couldn't really tell you the exact way that numbers come up with. But um, what is important for you to understand is that this fluctuates and it goes up and down, up and down every day. Typically, if the Dow Jones goes up, that means most companies in America and around the world are doing pretty well because the Dow Jones is universally the most recognized one. That's the 30 largest companies, you know, that are listed, that are publicly traded. So when the Dow Jones goes down, that's not good. Not just for the United States, but for the global economy. And if we look, things were going good up until about February, March of this year. Well, what happened in February, March this year? Coronavirus. Shut down. We were forced to stay inside. Restaurants, bars, all these places closed. Businesses couldn't really operate the same way they had. Goods weren't being able to be transported. So now companies are you know, closing down, shuttering their businesses, having to fire and lay off employees. Now people in the millions are filing for unemployment because they no longer have a source of income. And because they don't have a source of income, they're not spending money like they used to. If they're not spending money, that hurts the other companies that are still thriving that put the market in a panic and so people thought oh no my value of my company the share i own is going to go down so they start selling off in a panic because they want to somehow re reclaim a profit off what they bought because if you wait too long to sell you'll lose money and so that's when the panic really set in is in february march people began selling off stock and so it just plummeted and it tanked I mean, I lost money in, in stocks. I, people have lost hundreds of thousands. People in their 60s who have been saving for retirement by investing, money just gone. The good news is we're kind of in a period of we've hit a pretty low mark and we've recovered a good amount. There's no guarantee that we'll go back up consistently for a while. We could hit another spike depending on this news of the virus, um, but that's still to be determined. And this is so again, an example of how's the market doing, the international market, right? Um, what if we look at individual companies? Like what's a company's potential to grow? Well, let's look at Sears. Sears stock is worth 20 cents. If you have heard maybe any news about Sears recently is that they're almost going out of business. Sears at one point was one of the biggest companies in America. Back in the golden age of when people would go to the malls and people would go to these department stores, Sears was very successful. But in the advent of internet technology, um, Amazon buying things online, uh, the death of the malls is kind of happening. And companies like Macy's, Nordstrom, JCPenney, Sears, they're slowly going out of business. I mean, even this doesn't even really show us 
decades ago, but you know, even back in 2007, bef right before the recession, um, which was really kind of the last hurrah of Sears, it cost about $144 to buy a share of Sears. Well, look, here we are in 2020 and it's worth 20 cents. Imagine if you bought it at that high at $144 and you held on to it today. That would be hard. So Sears at this point is kind of on, you know, on its last few steps of life. It's only a matter of time before they go bankrupt and all those shares become worthless. Um, and that's because if we're looking at the company's potential to grow, Sears, it, no one's going to Sears. The days of people going to the malls and buying things like that are done, especially in the coronavirus, Sears is in a lot of trouble. So that's when you look at companies' potential to grow. If you look at a company like Netflix, stock, see what we get from the max from them. When they first started opening back in 2002, they're only worth a dollar and 21 cents. But over time, as Netflix has kind of taken over really the streaming market, I mean, it's worth $435, right? And that's because unlike Sears, Netflix is a company that's kind of built for the future in the 21st century, right? So that's why they've over time have grown and grown and grown. Um, you're probably maybe wondering right now is why is Netflix worth $435? Why is Amazon worth a thousand um, or two thousand? That has to do with a, the value of the company. It also has to do with how many shares are available. If there's only so many shares, naturally there's going to be more competition and the price is going to go up with those shares. If you release more shares, the price is going to go down. So companies kind of have to figure out when's the right time to either release more shares or just keep with the shares they've allowed the public to have. And that's like people who are much smarter than I know I am and understand the market way better than I do that understand when to release those shares. The last one is what is the recent news about the company? Um, when I first started teaching this unit, <laughs> I looked at a, uh, I don't know if you guys remember this one. There was that, I think it was the Asian doctor who got dragged off like that United airplane, like by like the, uh, I think like the flight attendants and the air marshals and it looked really bad at United. And so their stocks like dragged and tanked. Um, oh, it was a big old mosquito on the killer. Ooh, yeah. So it was a big old mosquito in this room. I ain't messing around. Um, <laughs> And so, I mean, if we're, if I'm trying to think right now, oh, I killed it. Yeah, it's right there. Um, what companies aren't doing well? If we look at gas companies, for example, Chevron stock. If we look at like the past six months. So typically, maybe look at the past five years. Yeah, that's a better example. Maybe in the past year. No, let's look at the past five years. Um, Chevron obviously is a big American oil company based in Richmond. Maybe, you know, people that work there or family members or whatnot. And historically, you know, because gas is widely used every day, they're pretty consistent. Obviously prices go up and down with varying reasons, but for the most part, you know, gas is going to do well and it's up a hundred dollars, but guess what? In the time of a global shutdown, no one's driving, planes aren't flying, ships aren't transporting goods. Chevron's consumers, right? No one's buying gas. They have to drop the price. So people are buying gas and the price of oil is going down. Their stock crashed, right? Um, at its low, it was at 59 bucks. And that wasn't too long ago. That was only about a month ago. No, nah, nah, yeah, about a month ago. Uh, you would have made almost double your money almost if you had, you had bought it then and then sold it today. Um, and again, this panic, right? The same time the Dow Jones, which measures the 30 biggest companies went down. So did like a company like Chevron. Okay. And that has to do with the recent news about the company. You might've heard like a couple weeks ago, like oil, like actually became like worth negative money. And that has to do with uh, the fact that oil was just in barrels and no one was moving it. So people were paying to like, just to move it. Like the companies were paying you to move it and buy it. That's how desperate they were getting. We're in wild times, people. Um, we only got a couple more slides, okay? Um, again, I kind of mentioned this, but the Dow Jones is one of the main places that stocks are sold in the US. NASDAQ is another one you uh, might heard of. Um, it looks more at technology companies. So Dow Jones is really 
the one to look at. Um, the New York Stock Exchange is like the building where, and it's a, actually kind of more of an area where the Dow Jones trading happens. Um, so the New York Stock Exchange is um, pretty well known and popular. Um, the bull is pretty infamous. Um, we'll talk about bull and bear markets later. Um, that's Wall Street itself. That's the actual outside of the New York Stock Exchange where the Dow Jones trading happens. Most countries, again, have their own um, major stock markets, but New York is usually, because it's kind of the financial center of the world, um, it's where all the major world banks are located. Um, it's the most internationally recognized and respected one. There are stock exchanges in and around the country elsewhere. Like there's a stock exchange in San Francisco, so known as the Pacific Stock Exchange. Um, it's just not really as well known as the uh, New York uh, Stock Exchange. But people go to work there and they do businesses and trading, um, you know, especially like when business hours are still going on the West Coast because the East Coast is three hours ahead. A lot of trades get done like in the Pacific Stock Exchange for like people on the West Side, the West Coast who are like doing late afternoon trading and stuff. Um, and then typically the, the business hours go from about 9.30 a.m. to 4 Eastern time. That's typically in a normal trading period. It's the only time you can trade. If you want to trade um, off those hours, you have to use like other international markets. Like, uh, like you might have to use countries in Europe and Asia whose business days are operating. So you'd have to, like if you want to buy a share at midnight, um, you'd have to have like some broker um, in Europe or Asia who's like working. Or you'd have to, go to like, like an online investment company. And then that's how the deal would be put in. It would be put in an international uh, stock market. Um, and so that's how that would work. Um, we're going to talk more about how to read stock, look at stock, understand stock in our next video. Um, but go ahead and watch this. Hopefully you get some out of it. And uh, let's see, stop the share. Um, and yeah, keep staying safe and take care.